where we last left our heroes, they had been assisting Venariel Whistlestein with the acquisition of the Whistlestein family spellbook, which they found in the uh, magical mirror dimension created by her great great grandmother Zalasel. Inside, they found a clone copy of Venariel guarding the book from Darrington Loxley, uh, who was being held in a who was being held in stasis inside of the core of a water elemental. And they eventually freed them, got out of the situation, and the book was restored to its rightful owner. And now Venariel is currently researching methods by which to help the king with his current predicament, that being uh, his soul slowly being corrupted by the energies of the bleeding god. But while that's going on, Wolfgang decides that it's a great time to take his uh, four best students out to test them in the field. As he, uh, as he and the party approach the Kylum Diaboli, they were greeted by the four ragtag students along with their very proud teacher, Hogan. So you, uh... See them standing in front of you in various level of readiness and alertness. <clears throat> I assume by this point you've had a chance to look over what they're all about. Yep. This Wolfgang has all of their character sheets on him. I sure do. What do you think, sir? Pogan marches up to you and just kind of like puts his hands on his hips at your side and just looks very proud at them. They seem capable. If some of them don't seem very attentive. I'll, I'll look to the one who is kind of uh, yawning. Uh, uh, uh. Sorry, sorry, sir. Uh. Would you like to go for a nap? Oh, uh, no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm awake, I promise. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, was up late imagine so imagine for all four of you this will be your first hunt I know that might seem like a daunting process but trust me I will be far better equipped than I was for my first um if I may ask sir the uh uh sorry Enix steps forward what was your first hunt like? First hunt. Yeah, this is uh, the stubbly looking half, or the stubbly looking halfling kind of walks forward sheepishly with his hand in the air. Oh, jeez. I was asked about this earlier. Uh... <laughs> Putting you on the spot! I was in over my head. I was with my uncle, going through the forests. We would gotten he gotten word because he was the demon hunter in charge at the time. Gotten word that a fiend was in the area. Not not the fiends that we know today, but just you know. I mean, like that ones that you wrote about. Not the ones that I wrote about. No. Mm. It's it's a long story. I'll I'll tell you when we get back. Maybe you've no for a pint, eh? <laughs> Sorry. Who was that? Uh, that that was uh, that was Horace Bellbreaker. Provided we all make it back, Bellbreaker. Right, sir. I trust you all know going into this that this is a dangerous proposition that we've gotten ourselves into. Uh, you notice when you're saying that, Mr. Valiant Lightbrand, the uh, sheepish cleric-looking man with all the shiny uh, ring mail, kind of like shifts a little. <clears throat> uh, just awkwardly shifting when you're uh, mentioning the danger. I 
I could see that it was right of me to tag along. Maybe I can offer you all a few pointers, some helpful advice. I've brought along some friends of my own. We're all capable monster hunters in their own right. I'll, I'll turn back to Asmo and Tiwig, provided that they... Can I just be covered in, like, songbirds? Yes. Can Asmo <laughs> be slab squatting, drinking from a brown bag? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they look on at you, and um, you get a couple of cocked eyebrows. I'll just shake my head. But monster hunters, they are not. But Calum Diaboli, they are not. That's where you come in. Do we know exactly what it is we're looking for? The uh, mousy-looking half-elf woman kind of steps forward, you know, or as Rebecca Whisperwind. Rebecca Whisperwind. It's a beast that's been... Stalking the fields of one uh, of the Crowley residents. Pogan, I believe you have more information. Aye, that I do. <clears throat> so, Mr. Crowley, uh, apparently down in the ranches, a uh, few of their livestock have been going missing. I, of course, let all of you know this beforehand, but just to get everybody back on the same page. About uh, five nights or so, ago there were some disappearances noticed in the livestock, specifically in the cow and bull pens. Now, you know, every now and again one breaks free, you see that the gate was broken, but the next night it happened again, and again, and again, and clearly there must have been foul, something foul to play. So they called for us, Went down, and sure enough, there was signs of a struggle. It looks like something was hunting. Hunting for easy prey. Which makes it perfect for you lot! He holds his hands out to the four of them. Anything that hunts easy prey should itself, in theory, be easy prey. Indeed. We'll not even be hard prey. We'll be the hunters. But there's only one true way to find out what you're hunting. And that's by going down there and finding out yourself. That's why we've been chosen. You've been chosen for this task. They all stand... Uh, they, they're... they're uh, actually, roll uh, Persuasion. I have all of their sheets open. I don't have mine. There you go. Get that one. Persuasion. Eight. I was going to say with advantage, too. And, yep, still double eight there. Uh, they, they, they stare at you, some of them a little glassy-eyed. Let me roll for a couple of them here. All a little bit glassy-eyed, but they uh, they understand that uh, you know it's 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 basically just another lesson. But they are you can definitely tell by their demeanor that they want to prove themselves to you specifically. Wolfgang will sort of nod. Rest assured. Hogan thinks that you're ready for this. That I trust his judgment. But, you're to follow my commands at all times. Yes, sir, they all say. As a holds up his hand, does that, go for you, all, does that go for all of us? Uh, you never listen to me anyway. Uh, you catch kind of a snicker coming from uh, Mr. Horace Bellbreaker. I just, just grin at Asmo, look back at them. <clears throat> No, actually, Asma gets off, stops slab squatting, and puts down the brown bag. Who's the one who laughed? Horace? Did I just hear myself a snicker? Who did that? <clears throat> Who's laughing? He, ah! He sheepishly kind of holds up his hand. Uh, uh, me. 
Aslan just Sorry, slides Zeus. right into the frame with the... Never, ever laugh at someone who can save your life. You gotta earn about... that right. He uh, stands about a uh, head and a half taller than you, but uh, go ahead and roll intimidation. I stretch my neck up. He's, he's still a bit taller than you. You uncoil from your clothes like Earthworm Jim. <laughs> yes. There's no other way around it. You noodle out. Go ahead and roll intimidation on him real quick. Oh, boy. Here we go. I, wait, hold on. I have an elegant courtier. Charisma persuasion check to gain a bonus equal to what? Never mind. That's against us for charisma saving throws. Sorry. Yeah. Forgive me. I thought that was something for intimidation. Ten. Uh, you can see him, like, as he physically seems to shrink a little bit and kind of, like, move back away from you a little. Uh, he, he's, he definitely seems to uh, get the point from what you're saying. Sorry. I uh, <clears throat> just, oh, no, just uh, thought what you said uh, was so funny. Well, let's just make it very clear, Bellbreaker. You don't get to chuckle at someone until you save their life. I was unaware of that rule, but I will be keep that in mind. careful. <clears throat> that bell might not be the only thing that's broken today of yours. <laughs> As it slides yes. back, picks up his brown bag, and goes back to slav squatting. Yes, sir. His voice kind of cracks under. Oh, uh, I like that. Under the pressure. And Aswell just Aswell kind of makes a face of like, "See, there you go." Just rolls his eyes. I heard that. Uh, there's, I a, there's, a, there's a sly grin on Rebecca's face when you when she sees him kind of like shrink like that. As I was saying, you will obey my orders at all times. If I say jump, don't ask how high, just do it. If I tell you to run, just run. Yeah, yes, sir. No, no, no problem. Uh, Valiant Life Brand speaks up. Good. Well, we all have that covered. Now, who's ready to kill a monster? Uh, I'm ready to return the mule. I have the mule with me. It's it's standing over to the side, eating some of the flowers in the Kylum Diaboli's uh, hey. front garden. T would control uh. that beast. <laughs> Oh, okay. Hey, well, I walk over. I guess I'll handle animal to bring the mule do you, over. Do you slap that ass, Nadine? No, let's see. I'm... I don't know, let's see. 21. <laughs> no, you, you, you gently caress the back of its mane, and it lifts its head up and nuzzles you and walks alongside you. Time to go home. Oh. We at least know one beast from the Crowley estate uh, was not killed and eaten. Just, uh, Repurposed. We'll be returning that as well. Now then, are we prepared? Yes, sir. I believe they're about as ready as they're going to be. So let's get to the site and see what we can find today. Hopefully, All the right. trail ain't too cold. Uh, guess we'll head down to the Crowley estate. Cruising right. on down Main Street, we're relaxing, feeling cool. Seatbelts, everyone! All right, you guys begin marching. Uh, you make your way out of town. Uh, and you remember, that it's, it's, it's about like a half day's journey to get there on foot. Uh, it's, it's a few hours' journey to get there uh, to the uh, far reaches of the Crowley ranches and estate out that way. But it's a, it's a nice walk. It's very uh, calm, and you do have a uh, decent. You have a, you have a decent walk to get there, but it's a very nice, calm, relatively cool day, all things considered, since it was raining last night. So you get the nice dew on the ground, and there's a nice crispness to the breeze, and it takes you. Yeah, you're, you're basically just marching through the farmland at the moment, making your way to the outer reaches where the animals graze on the plains near the side of the uh, lake. I'm going to turn to Wolfgang. Hey, Wolfgang. Yes, t -wing. The birds have told me their secrets. <laughs> sort of narrows his brow. 
as I was sipping a drink, it just like looks from behind. It just looks over like what? Why <laughs> should we be worried? He makes that face. <laughs> they said you're okay. <laughs> and they said thanks for the seed. You will be spared. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll make sense later. And I just kind of dismissively hand wave. <laughs> Chekhov's bird walking, gun here. Walking kind of turns his head a little bit. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Nani. As, you, as you look around, you see some of the students kind of uh, chatting with each other down the uh, down the line. Pogan marching up front, uh, trying to keep pace with everybody due to his stubbier <laughs> legs. It's a Pogan, right? P O G U N. P O G U N. Okay, Pogan. What's his last name again? I don't have that information immediately available. Damn. Um... Pogan last name. I could probably find it here real quick. That's no, okay. I just wrote Pogan. Try to make sure my date my notes are up to date. I was not giving a last name either. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have one. He's like he's like he's like share. The rock. Or Asmo. <laughs> Perhaps there's a reason for it. In fact, there probably is in the lore that I wrote up for him. I got no last name. His name is Pogan no list name. <laughs> yes, there is a reason, actually. Cool. I'm glad I was right. Woo! All right. And as you approach the ranching area... Uh, everybody seems to be a little bit restless from this walk, but, uh, you know, they, they, they're, they're having a good time. Uh, Mr. Lightbrand seems to be sweating a bit more since he's been wearing the uh, ring mail this whole time. But you guys finally make it out to the farmland. Uh, actually, uh, before you get there, you pass by the spot where, Tiwig, you found your mule. Oh! I just gently lead the mule to the exact same place that I got it from. You lead it back to a pen and you <laughs> hitch it. I want, to, I want to imagine you just picking it up and placing it back in the grazing field. Just <laughs> adding its head. Thanks so much for your help. I appreciate it. Aww. It haws at you and gives a slight little whinny. As it, it goes nice back path. to grazing in the field. Is it wrong? I just imagined that horse from Family Guy. Maybe. I don't know. I can't no, I don't know, that horse. I don't know anyway. what that is. Damn it! Uh, I need to get out more. Lost on you. Anyway, uh, you guys eventually make it to the far side of the, ra of the ranch as the... Uh, it's about noon now. Sun's really peeking out overhead. You've been walking for maybe about four or five hours to get to where, or traveling for about four to five hours to get here. And uh, out front, they're waiting, uh, awaiting your arrival for today. Uh, you see a old weathered man. His scan, his skin kind of tanned and leathered and wrinkled from probably years and years of farm work and uh, physical labor and just being out in the sun. Hello, are you, are you from the Kylum Di Diaboli? Yes, we are from the Kylum Diaboli. I have to forgive me. I'm not not much uh, for the reading, and the words seem strange to me. Well, that's fair enough. I am I am Grandmaster Wolfgang. Very nice to meet you, Miss M Mister Wolfgang uh, Connolly. Correct? Yes. Yes, very nice to meet you, Master Connolly. Ah, uh, I. Uh, run this particular section of ranches for Master Crowley. And, well, uh, it's been quite hectic these past, uh, well, few nights or so. Uh, t last night was a little more action-oriented than I think I was ready to hear about. Can you give us any details? Well, I, I was not here during the evening. I'm, I am I more manage the day shifts and make sure that everything's running smoothly. Uh, we have a night guard that's on duty 
at in the evenings. Uh, he would know a bit more, but from what he said, the, the, he heard a commotion as, as you know, he expected. Uh, and when he went to check, he found some shadowy creature standing over one of our prized bulls. And when he tried to fire at the beast with his crossbow, he just could not hit it. It got away from him, and but it did manage to scare it off, so, well, we have part of a bull anyway. Hmm. Uh, should, should I take you to the scene? That would be helpful, thank you. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, where of my manners? Uh, Ichabod, Ichabod Brittle. Holds out his hand. Uh, he's, he's got kind of like wiry muscles. Like, you can tell this guy does farm work. Like, he's, he's got that, like, farmer strength. Pleasure to meet you, Ichabod. Uh, a quick question. A firm uh, grip. Yeah? Uh, Nick, like, are we outside the Crowley Manor, the house? Are we, uh... The house is our... way back in Dragon's Rest. This is just lands that he owns. Oh, okay. We're, in a, yeah, we're, he, near, a he, we're near a field, then. Yeah, a, you, are, a field? you are at his... You are at a ranch, basically. Yeah, nice. land owned by him, but not near the estate. Ah! These, these lands were granted to him by the... Uh, to his family, specifically, by the royal family some times ago, and... He decided to use it for agricultural purposes and is essentially uh, the sole, like, he provides 80, per, 80 to 90% of the food for this section of the kingdom and probably a lot of the trade throughout most of the southern kingdom. So yeah, he is, uh, he's a big deal around here. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Brittle begins to lead you back through the pens, um the smell of cow is very evident around here but as you uh make your way through this area you definitely begin to notice a more distinctly musky kind of grossly sweet smell that smell of rot that smell of meat that's been sitting in the sun and uh yeah um, three, and... Mr. Uh, Valiant Lightbrand is not having, uh, having much of this smell. You can see him kind of, like, covering his face with his, uh, with a handkerchief. He's kind of, uh, trying to keep him... He's, he's going a little pale from it, even. And as you get closer and closer to it, you see a kind of a dark lump in the horizon near the back end of this field as you approach what appears to be the rotting husk of half a bull. Which half? The front half. Oh, boy. Uh, its tongue uh. kind of rolled out of its mouth, its eyes open in what appear to be abject horror. And uh, it is covered in wounds, and its body appears to have been just kind of ripped in half. Uh, huh. huh. Teewig, don't, Teewig, don't look. Well, look don't of course look. I'm looking. This is just how we found him this morning. Well, how the guard found him last night, anyway. Wolfgang, can I look closer? Sure. Right, Hogan, gonna... Asmo, you stay with the rest of the group. Tiwig, you're coming with me. Okay. Oh, God, I'm babysitting. Oh, my God. Hi. They all look kind of confused at each other for a moment. And Pogan actually walks up to you, Wolfgang. <clears throat> uh, sir, uh, what, what exactly are we waiting back for exactly? To make sure there's nothing, you know, putrid that will get in their young little veins or anything like that. I sort of have some specific immunities to some of these things. I'm just making sure it's safe for them to come over first. That's fair enough, sir. I just want to make sure that uh, you know what you're preparing them for. Absolutely. This is going to be a learning experience. For, as, uh, and, and, and as if hearing that, you hear Asma go... All right, so just wild guesses. What was the cause of death of this cow? Uh, you see them kind of like looking quizzically. Um, 
Mr. Bellbreaker. Uh, could have been a bear, I guess. Uh, <coughs> just came in his tore it and ran. Uh, to which Rebecca looks at him. A bear. Anybody worth their salt with a crossbow would be able to hit a bear from 50 yards. And I don't know if a bear could do that to a bull. Anyone else? Because, uh, it looks like whatever it was grabbed onto it and ripped it in half and ate the, the ass end of it. Uh, the halfling, uh, Enoch, is kind of like looking. I mean, without us being able to get over there and look at it, it's kind of hard to say. It could be a number of things. Mm. Sometimes you might not be able to get close to the bodies. You need to be, uh, have a guesstimation. Mm. Just... Alright, he's, he's gonna try to make a perception check from where he's at. Actually, uh, you know what? Connor, you have all their character sheets. Can you give me Enoch, uh, an Enoch perception check? Sure thing. Perception check for Enoch. Six. Woo! Yeah. No! I don't know. It looks really beat the hell up. I can't really... I would, uh, since I'm near the body, I'd like to just roll a either a nature or an investigation to determine the claw marks and whether they are of a bestial nature. All right, go ahead and uh, give me a nature check. Okay. Sixteen. You can tell by looking at the marks on this beast that there are certainly marks that you would determine, like, yeah, there there definitely looks like there are some fang bite marks on there. Uh, they look relatively... Uh, they, it's definitely from a predatory creature. They have very sharp incisors that are piercing the flesh of this thing. Uh, it seems to be, at the very least, a medium-sized creature. Okay. Uh, but some of these scratch marks and claw marks that you're seeing don't necessarily match up with anything that you've seen in nature. Okay. Uh, I'll turn up to Wolfino. Uh, something of nature did not do this. Whatever did it, look at the incisor here, and I point to one of the deep kind of cuts. That's like a, like a big tooth, you know? Like the when the cats have it, and the dogs have it, and like the wolves have it. Um, but it's not like massive, but it is really big. So I'd say maybe whatever this is was like maybe medium-sized. Hmm. I believe you're right. Uh, do uh, I detect any funky business like magical aura, poison, any anything like that from where I am? I was uh, not just about to nature check, but Wolfgang, you said you were about to do something. I was just about to uh, use my angelic sight to cast detect magic. All right. Uh, as your eyes begin to glow, you look over this animal. It doesn't seem to be magical in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't look like it was cursed. Uh, go ahead and give me a perception check or an investigation check. Investigation, okay. 13? As you're looking around, there doesn't appear to be anything really magical at all about this creature whatsoever. Well, let's let the uh, ducklings take a crack at it. <laughs> ducklings. I mean, that's kind of what it is, right? That's the only way I understand it. You are like the duck, and they are like the ducklings. More like a papa wolf teaching his cubs how to hunt. They do I do like, that, right? I like, well, kind of. I like the duck analogy a bit better. I just walk away. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I was just imagine you like, no, they're ducks. <laughs> yeah, no, they're ducks. He sort of cu cups his mouth. All right, it's safe. Uh, Pogan shifts his arm, and they all begin to kind of march over to examine the creature. Uh, Valiant a little bit greener under the gills as he gets closer to this thing. Oh, God. The smell. Gotta get used to that, lad. Breathe it in. Uh, yeah. may maybe don't take a deep breath. You see Horus actually doing just that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not... It's not that bad. That was a stupid idea. It's fine. 
It's something you get used to over time. Uh, as Enoch is... Uh, Enoch and Rebecca are very closely trying to examine the wounds. Uh, would you give me a uh, medical check for Rebecca and a investigation for Enoch? Rebecca's medicine, 11. Enoch's investigation, 4. I don't really know what I'm looking for here. These... Isn't the way this thing was killed? I, I don't I don't even know. Yeah, these wounds are all over the place. They seem to be having trouble discerning the cause of death. Well, you what certainly don't think a not, You certainly don't think a beast kill uh, a beast that's naturally occurring could have done this, right? An adult male bull cut clean in half. Is it cut or torn? Uh, it. Does uh, go Asmo? Would you like to make a uh, check on this thing? Perception? Uh, survival or medical? Wow, well, they both got one. Eighteen. Oh. Uh, Asmo, as you're looking at it, you can tell that uh, the part that got torn off of this thing, it was like a series of very sharp strikes from. Uh, a, like it, it seemed to be a so, something with like very sharp appendages at the end of it dug into this thing over and over and over again and then tore the other half away as it ran it looks like whatever it was just kept see these slashes right here kind of going in on an angle yeah, chop was pointing chop, at these very chop. small grooves that almost looked like they were made by you know sticking a bunch of knives together on a paddle and striking down on something yeah, this thing was chop, 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 chop until it was in half, and this half is gone. So we're either dealing with a series of serrated teeth or bla uh, just a blades. There's no finesse with this. This is just pure power and force. Trust me, I've seen knuckleheads with daggers do stuff like this. This was not a clean it strike. De it, de it was definitely a frenzied attack. You're not sure how much power was behind it, but it was frenzied. Oh, so whatever it is, it has... Uh, sharp things in its arsenal. Hmm. A series of sharp claws at the end of a paw? Hmm. Ma claw. I uh, just ate one. Huh? Does it look like. It, it looks like the the bull was trying to run, correct? Like run away from something. Yeah. Um, T wig, you could you could tell this from your nature check earlier, but it looked like there were claws digging in on the side of its back, as if something had leaped leapt onto it and was holding on there and trying to bite it down on its neck. Uh, but then it got, you know, it had to jump off after it got start. Like you know, eventually that attack stopped yeah. and it just went with whatever it could. Whatever these were, they were working as some sort of pack. Very well orchestrated. You can tell by the bite marks on the shoulders and the sundering and the, well, what used to be its bum. Hmm. Is there any other animals in this area with us, or is it just the, the, the bull's body? Uh, there, there are other cows, but they are staying away from this area. Uh, for various reasons. I mean, the obvious one being that there's a dead bull there. And it seems to be one of the larger bulls that you've seen in the pen. Mm. Kind of an alpha bull, so to speak. Psst. Wolfgang. Hmm? What? Do you want me to talk to the witnesses? That might be helpful. What do you mean, witnesses? Rebecca looks up at you. Well, Tiwig here is a druid. Oh, you you practice nature magic. Uh, my, yes. My my mother, she knew a thing or two about that. It's one of the reasons that, well, I know some things. Would you would you show me? Absolutely. And I will cast speak with animals on myself. Tiwig begins to glow green. 
I'm gonna walk sure. up to the nearest cow who looks like they probably would have gotten the best like sight of this spot. Yeah, Rebecca Motion. follows you. Rebecca follows you very intrigued. She's your duckling now. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I can handle this responsibility. Now you're raising a tree. Uh, just... she, she watches as you uh, go about your routine here. <clears throat> Moo, I will ask the cow. <laughs> she just sits there like, huh. Moo. Hand to her chin. Moo. Uh, a, 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 couple, a couple of the, uh, one of the cows kind of wanders over to you after being like, you talking to me? Yeah, and I'm talking to you. One wanders your way. Hello. How are you? How are you doing? I'm, I'm a little frightened, but okay. I have grass in my tummy. It's That's good. That's good. Um, do you mind if I ask you some questions? Sure. What exactly happened here? I, I don't quite know myself, really, but they, they, there seems to be a lot of us that have just disappeared over the past few days, and last night it got really loud. Normally we don't notice, but last night it woke me up. I was sleeping, and then, well, I heard him scream. And then we heard the man scream. The man and scream? Then there was loud, splashy noises. And then there was breaking of wood. And then he, he was like that. Has any of the cows here, like, actually seen with their whole eyeballs? What happened here? Most of us are asleep by the time these come. These? You said these. Y yes. So there's more than one. Maybe. Kind of turns its head to the side and you can hear the bell kind of ding 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 on its neck. Goes down to the ground to bite another patch of taller grass and starts chewing the cud. I'm sorry, would you like some? Yes, absolutely. I would love some. She noses some of she noses some of the taller grass toward you. I'm gonna You're take so... a fistful of it and put it in my compartment. You're so small, you could use some to grow. <laughs> yeah. Is it dried grass? It's like hay, I'm assuming? Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it has rained recently, so the grass itself is, uh, rel like, I, I mean, it's, it's relatively springly. Okay. But it's, uh, it's kind of like tall, wild grass. You got some of the, uh, the little fuzzies on the top of it, like it's about to, sp uh, about to spread. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it a lot. Do you happen to know who might be the best, like, lookout amongst your kind, or any of the animals here on the farm? Hmm. Around here, that would probably be the dog. <gasps> I have really heard it barking in off the way quite a few times. Yes, it 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 runs around, though normally at night it it usually tends to sleep too, and. I don't really know where it is now. Well, it is doesn't, hurt, doesn't hurt to ask. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the conversation. I nod. This entire time went... Yeah, Rebecca just sitting there like... No, 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 no. You're doing no, no pronunciation. There's no words in this. It's... It's a sound, you know, not, not a... Not like you're saying moo, the word. Come on. There you go. That was closer. Uh, I only have ten minutes on the spell. Wolfking, I will be right back. And I'm going to run out the door and look for this dog before my spell. Uh, she, 
She is she is she's fo uh yeah she's following you. W what are we looking for? A dog. Uh, Wolfgang, roll me a perception check for uh Rebecca. Uh, da -da -da -da. fourteen. Uh, she sees a tree in the distance and begins to like. She jumps up on the first branch, second branch. Like, she seems to climb, like, you know, it's like second nature to her as she Whoa. begins to peer out. He's over there across that small pond. Awesome, thank you. And I'm going to full book it to that dog. And she leaps down and tries <laughs> to keep pace with you. It's going to take you guys, like, maybe a minute to get there if you back okay. at the bull corpse or doing anything. Meanwhile, back at the bull corpse. <laughs> uh, Horace is just kind of like trying to like look around and like he's touching the bull, looking under its like ears and stuff. Now, there's no traces of magic on this. His blood didn't turn to acid when it was killed, nor is the corpse cursed. Does that usually happen? Sometimes. Oh. Uh, it's not very often. Usually requires specific, uh, sometimes sentient creatures. But they wouldn't go after bulls. Unless they were really hungry, right? I mean, like, if I, if I was hungry, I'd, I'd, I might, I don't know, maybe not a whole bull, but like a smaller cow? Pig? Let's just assume this isn't one of those. Okay. <laughs> really had to twist his leg there. <laughs> I'm going to look through the uh, my own little monster manual that I've got, and I'm going to see if this matches the dis if uh, what information we've gotten so far, like sharp claws, frenzied pack tactics kind of thing, jumping legs, see if that matches any descriptions of anything we've encountered so far. Okay, uh, looking through your manual, I want you to give me uh, just a straight intelligence check with advantage. Four! Woo! Something about this, like, it's bugging you in the back of your head. Like, God, maybe I... Maybe he could be... Like, there's just so many things in your book that it could be. But there's also so many things that you know you haven't written about that it could be as well. Or your family maybe hasn't... Like, there's just so many options that it's overwhelming to you at the moment. Eh. From what we know so far, this matches too many descriptions. Sort of close the book and, uh... Hmm. Checking my abilities real quick. Sure thing. Uh, I'll I'll look down uh, I'll look down on the floor at the uh, I'm assuming there's like a trail of of blood leading up to this corpse. Uh, go ahead and give me an investigation. Remember there was Soft rain last night. Ooh, yep. Even with that, uh, even though it had rained last night and some of this might have been washed away, you uh, you managed to find a bit of a trail here. There seems to be traces of blood that leads <coughs> toward the broken fence. And there's a lot of <coughs> matted grass and uh, you actually find the crossbow bolt that appeared to have been fired at this creature. I'll, I'll point to the dirt and say, see, even when even if, a, even when, if it rains, you can still find a blood trail. If you look carefully enough, and I'll point out as we're walking to the to the opposite end of the trail. Uh, yeah, everybody's kind of like following you toward the broken fence. Uh, they see the crossbow bolt that you point out. Adds up with the story that you've heard so far. Uh, what direction was it fired from? Looks like it was... Uh, there's a... There appears to be a small shack maybe about 50 yards away 
seems to be a guard outpost of sorts or just kind of a hangout place during the middle of the day. Uh, looks like it was fired from that direction. Hmm. Night guard must have come out of a shack, fired a bolt. Seems he missed. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, No, I won't yank it out. Um... You also manage, uh, with your investigation check, as you go to look at that bolt, uh, you do find what appears to be uh, some black hairs. Hmm. Black hairs. And these do, uh, if you still have, uh, I'm guessing you still have your magical, like, detect magic of it on. Yeah, I, it lasts for an hour. Yeah, so uh, these things do have a distinct magical pattern on them, just kind of innate. The hairs do? Hmm. Yeah, the, the hairs have a slight aura to them. Any sort of school? Not really. It's It seems to be, uh, if anything, it would probably be illusion. kind of fading that way, but it, it it's just kind of like the same kind of magical signature that you get from various creatures that have magic in their blood. Look at this. Oh. Got some of the bull's hairs? Mm -hmm. No. It, they're, it, it, they're too long. Yes. And unlike the bull, these hairs are giving off a faint magical signature. How can you tell that, sir? I'll just point to my glowing eyes. <laughs> oh, right. I got the touch. I, I got the power. Find, I guess we'd have to find our own way of figuring that out then. Detect the magic is a fairly, uh, fairly easy skill to learn once you get used to it, if you are magically inclined, but it's not necessary. Uh, some of us aren't so inclined. Indeed. That's fair enough. We each have our parts to play. I'll uh, examine the hairs. Does the energy signature they give off feel familiar at all? Give me a... Uh, give me a wisdom check. Just straight wisdom. Nine. Man. Oh. It's hard for you to say. Like, you've, you've come across so many things that uh, they, they all kind of muddle together in your head at times. Uh, uh, I'll investigate more of the end of the of the blood trail because this is where likely the bull was initially attacked. Is, the, is it fairly long at all? Uh, the trail itself, like, from what you can tell from your previous investigation, uh, you can find the spot where the, you, you can find the spot where the bull was standing previously. It appeared to be facing the way it is currently facing, and it did not make it very far. It made it maybe 10, 20 yards mm. as this creature attacked it. And this remaining muddled mess of ground toward the broken fence, from what you can tell, is uh, the creature dragging away the piece that it got. Seems to me this all happened very fast. The bull was jumped right here, and I'll, I'll point to the like the the impressions the bull made while I was yeah, standing, you, just standing around. Yeah, you can see a couple of bull footprints kind of wedged their way into the muddy ground. They were preserved by the rain. Uh, and you can see that they panically run forward as this creature must have jumped it. And then you reach the point where the crossbow was fired off. And then you see that trail of muddled grass going back toward the fence over the bull's footprints. So it hmm. ran away and got dragged back, and half of it got dragged back. Was there a creature ran away from the 
person wielding a weapon. Was there a second blood trail leading away from the bull? It doesn't seem that way. It, it looks like uh, it, it seemed to be straight line and then pull back is what it looked like. Mm. Uh, I'll, I'll start looking for places this creature might have gotten in from. All right. How, how, uh, how, judging from the way the bull was facing during all of this, it wouldn't have noticed this thing sneaking up on it. So I'll just basically look in the area behind it. What are we looking for here, sir? Uh, Enoch says as he's following you. Just trying to get a good feel of what we might be dealing with here. Obviously, I'm not sure how good Bull's hearing is, but to my understanding, this creature was snuck up on. So, you think we're dealing with an ambush predator? That's my thinking. Makes sense, based on what you were saying about the attack pattern there. Still, something doesn't quite add up here. I suppose that's what makes it a hunt for the Kylum Theoboli, right, sir? Uh, that's Valor right. Light Brand says, kind of keeping his head on a swivel, looking around, trying to make sense of anything around him. But you, you can tell a lot of this is way out of his depth. Exactly the right. Like brand. Uh, th th thank you. Hmm. Uh, I'll look around uh, near the bull's area for tracks that are not bull tracks. Okay. Uh, give me an investigation as you're looking around the area, and give me an invest after that. Give me an investigation for Enoch and Valiant as well. Okay. That's ten for Wolfgang. Nine for Enoch. And eight for Valiant. <laughs> wow. Yeah, as you guys are looking around, just trying to find any sort of sign of what, like, where this creature came from, where it stood, where it came from ambush, uh, go ahead and give me an investigation for uh, Horus as well, real quick. He's dumb as rocks, but I, I would be so happy if he makes this. At minus one... Mm -hmm. 15 with the best so far. Wow. Uh, Aslan's just been quiet this whole time, by the way. I just, just want to interfere in the lessons. Yeah, st still, unfortunately, he's... uh, He looks like he's doing his damnedest. Like, this is a level of focus you haven't seen on this guy today. But... Oh, man. If we just find it, then I can smash it. That's the point. Or that's the goal, rather. Ugh, he's just kind of walking around. That's why learning how to find it is just as important as learning how to smash it. None of you guys seem to uh, be able to f find any tracks from where this creature might have been standing when it was uh, laying the ambush. Shit. Tiwig, you have uh, made your way across the across the small pond, and you see a dog kind of chasing around uh, what appears to be a goose. Uh, as you get closer, the spells start saying, effect, "Get away from me! Get away from me! Hi, hi! You're my friend. I'm gonna be friends with you. Come on, let's go now. Nah, leave me alone!" Goose flies. I'm gonna out. scan the goose. Oh, I wanted to scan the goose before it flew away. Uh, give me, give me a, uh, give me a straight dex check then. Oh, no, no, no. 18! Holy shit! You got him. You got yes! him. Yes! Goose. Awesome. I'll add that to my repertoire. Oh. Ah! Uh, uh, rawr, rawr, my friend! Come back! New come friend on. over here! Look, new friend! And I wave Oh, my boy, arm. new friend! Runs over to you. <laughs> Hi, new friend! Hi, new friend! It's, ba it's, it's basically a border collie. It's bouncing up and down around you. Hi! Hi! <laughs> Hi, friend! Hi, friend! First of all, what is your name? You have to tell me right now. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, everybody calls me Jackie. I'm Jackie. That's what they call me. And I'm a good boy. 
You are the best of boys. I have a Oh, question. wow! <laughs> I can't wait to tell everybody. <laughs> I turn, I turn to, uh, to Rebecca and I just give her a two thumbs up and then I just turn back. Uh, I have a question. Just watching, or Rebecca's just watching go, ruff, 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 ruff. So, hey, Jackie, I have a uh, quick questions for you. Yeah. Uh, first question, did you see anything funky over at that- It was a barn, right? Or is it just a field? There's- there's a- there was a shack that you were by that's where the bull okay. died. I'm gonna- I'm gonna point towards where the bull was. Did you see anything over there last... night? Oh, uh, I was running around- uh, I, I- I was pretty sleepy then, but I- I smelled something. And- and I wanted to go check, and- and I did, but I- I couldn't see nothing, and- and I- I got real nervous around there. So something wasn't right. I I, I didn't did... like it. I didn't like it. And and now, oh, oh. What did what did you smell? It's like it was, it was something. It was it was something I hadn't smelled before. Well, I guess I had because it's it's been here a bit. It was kind of a smell, but I, I smelled it fresh. It was fresh this time. Fresh it smell. Was, the, yeah, if was, you could compare it, to, if you could compare it to anything, what mm -hmm. would you compare it to? It probably smells like it. Probably smells like mittens. Mittens. Like yeah, the yeah, it's my, the, yeah, yeah. She's my other friend. She she lives over there at at the big house. She she stays inside a lot, but sometimes she comes out and catches rats and stuff. They're also my friends. Oh, okay. Good to know. Yeah, it smells like so, her, but a lot more, lot more blood, a lot more blood, and different, different, but but similar. Okay, it's really helpful. Did you see them at all? Oh no! It was it was dark. I, I I didn't I didn't see much of anything. I I gave it I gave it my good I gave it my bestest boof, but 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 it didn't answer. And and I tried to make friends, but it but I I felt like it didn't want friends. And and then, oh boy, oh gosh, oh, gee, no I mean, no you 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 did a good job. I kind of pet oh, behind the ears. Oh, oh, You're oh, a good gee, boy. Oh, oh, heck, oh golly. Uh okay, good. That's that's. That's good. Is there like water nearby, like a puddle? Yeah, there's a, there's a small pond that uh, there appears to be, you know, this is what the goose was swimming around when the dog came and started yelling at it. I'm gonna cast shape water on it, and I'm okay. gonna make a spherical ball of water, which I'm then gonna freeze. I'm gonna grab that, and I'm gonna turn to Jack and go, "Go long!" And I'm gonna throw oh. that sucker as far as I can. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy. It should shatter on impact, but it gives the same effect. Yeah, the dog runs to the distance as the ball gets hurled. I kind of like, like wipe my hands off, like kind of like with my hands and turn to her and go, "Okay, let's go back and report to the rest of the pack." Okay, what 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 did we learn? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I I don't speak dog yet. Uh, we'll find out how important it is once Wolfgang tells me if it's important or not. Okay. Do you ever know if it's important? Uh, well, I, uh, literally, I am 12, and what is this? Um. Because <laughs> when you get information, and if you're out on a hunt, how are you supposed to know what's important? You know, you, mm, uh, mm, mm. Hmm. Well, you want to make sure to try and remember everything. Uh, even the smallest detail can help you. You know, what seems like something that's not important could be important. And, um, uh, oh man. Okay. Maybe, maybe this is a question for, like, Wolfgang and Asmo. Because, like, I mean, I, I... Jeez, oh, I just kind of like hold my hand, like my head, and just kind of think about it. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna... I, didn't, I didn't mean to put you on the spot like that. I no I way. Really I wanna, mean, I I'm standing I really here by my, my own choice. I, you didn't put me here. I walked here. Um, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. Uh, I don't really know what I'm doing, and you know, sometimes that's okay. Sometimes it's okay. I mean, you got to be like, you got to improvise sometimes. You can't just, nothing is ever going to be like perfect. So you got to be kind of.
kind of um what's the phrase you have to hope for the best but prepare for the worst improvise prepare for the worst but hope for the best once all other options are exhausted of course uh, of course yeah thank you all right all right let's, let's... go and i just start yeah. running like just booking it uh she follows at pace uh yeah, as you guys are finishing up your conversation on trying to find tracks and such, uh, you see that uh, T-Wig and Rebecca have returned. Hello, we're back. We talked to a dog. Uh, Was it a good dog? Oh, the best dog. Mm. And? All right, this is what the information I have collected so far. All right. So, <laughs> what? what was that? That was me clasping my hands together. I'm sorry, I don't have flesh. I have. Plonk. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like you were popping something open. <laughs> like you're popping open the memory jars. <laughs> Plonk. Right. Just start pouring Here's out everything. Of so, whatever it is, works as a pack, medium size, has big teeth or claws. The cow in the field said they heard a splashy noise and the breaking of wood. There is definitely more than one. I checked in with the dog, who said it smelt unique. It doesn't smell like anything comparable. Though I asked him if he had to compare, he says it smells like a cat. But not exactly like a cat, but similar to a cat, but with more blood to it. So... That's very helpful. Now we know what we're looking for. Well, All right. give me another intelligence check with uh, advantage. Come on. Motherfucker. Oh. <laughs> uh. Can you try your best, but you don't succeed. There's something Whoa, in the we'll back of just... your head with that eight. There's something in the back of your head. It's like, oh, something's ringing a bell, but I don't know what. Just flipping through his pages, just like, how'd that get smudged? Uh, shit. Mm. Who ripped out this page? The I one important page that we need. Uh, I have said nothing this entire time. I cannot be blamed. <laughs> Asmo's just eating it. Yeah, Asmo's unhinged as John is eating the rest of the bowl. <laughs> Asmo just comes out with, he's just rolling a giant blunt. I found some stinkweed over there. <laughs> Today just got really interesting. They, they do have weed on this farm, it is true. Just probably what? not where the animals are. Hemp rope is needed, Nick. It's true. And you know what? Weed's <laughs> legal here. <laughs> T-Wig. Truly is a fantasy world. Yes. Yes. You remember those things we fought in that cave with Gibling? Uh, the big demon guy? Yeah. Does that was, sound like this? He was a big guy. Yeah, I'm thinking no, but... I... Oh, you mean the tree underneath the tree thing. Right. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the heck those were. And I'm not going to lie, I was like maybe four, like four days old at that time, so... And... Some discerning looks among the, <laughs> uh, the pupils. <laughs> like... Yeah, I was only like four days old at that time, so that was really challenging to, you know, completely comprehend that. So, I mean, I I don't know. That's fair. Can I can I do an intelligence check, perhaps, to attempt to see if it's comparable? <laughs> can I help? <laughs> uh, to uh, to those creatures, go ahead and give me an intelligence check. Just a straight intelligence check. Twelve. Yes. Ah. You wouldn't say that those things are what caused this. Those things are big, bulky, almost like they—they they look like uh, they look like pudgy bulldogs, like big, like yeah, like, that, like the bulldog from Hulk, basically. Angley's okay. Hulk. And these things were killed by something significantly stealthier and less rambunctious than something like that. Mm, Wolfgang, if I recall, those things were like big buff, like things, you know, like they were like, oh, I kind of flex a little bit. 
they didn't really have the sort of teeth and claw that appears to be appearing here. Definitely whatever this is doesn't have so much of a strong presence as much as a sneaky, stealthy type, like Esmo. Mm. Mm. Here I was hoping it was going to be a species we've seen before. <sighs> All right. You think if we looked around the area where it happened, you could help us find any tracks or anything like that? Yeah, I could try and do that. If maybe uh, I could the, do that the, too, or get one of the kids to help out. Yeah, the tracks aren't necessarily hard to find. You can see where it pulled the bull's corpse out. Just follow this. Yeah, you were you were able to find that trail pretty easily, and the muddled grass continues onward past the broken gate. What? Where is it going towards? Is there a forest nearby? Is there a there hill is, in nearby? There is, fact, a forest nearby. Like it's it's leading off to the uh, northwest of this estate is where this uh, fence breaks out. Hmm. All right, Whisperwind, you're up the front with me. Yes, sir. She has kind of a uh, prideful smile on her face as she says that, and she steps to the front and begins tracking with you as everybody else stands. Uh, Probably like you know the, the the students follow you second. Do you uh, do the rest of you kind of like try to take up the rear? I'll take up the back just to keep my eyes on things that could potentially because these things are ambushy. I'm gonna just stay back just to make sure we're fine behind us because I have the highest perception. All right, so you point out the you know clear track to Rebecca, and she. Yeah pretty easily recognizes it, but go ahead and give her a survival check real quick. I believe she has a bonus because of favored terrain forest. Yeah, as you get to the forest, you will. Yeah. So this is, what was the roll again? Uh, survival. Survival. Six. Oh. <laughs> All right, can I uh, do the survival check? Oh, fuck. Uh, Wolfgang, you can also give me a survival check too. All right, I'm just re-rolling, hopefully. Set my RNG. Uh, yeah, your RNG is eleven. All right, you're Everyone's able to... getting an F, including the teachers. Yeah. yeah, this is rough today. I mean, it did rain last night, so the tracks aren't that clear. But luckily, since it was dragging half a bull, it is not an incredibly high check. Uh, she's been losing it every now and again just because she's not used to tracking like something being dragged over grass but every now and again you can see where uh it might have gotten dragged through a mud puddle and it streaked down some of the grass along the way and you're able to point that out to her and show her how the tracking works and you make it to the forest and you try to give her another shot okay which i believe with favored terrain gives her advantage on the survival check. yeah advantage all right the terrain survival check with advantage 21. Yeah! And after getting some pointers from you and entering a area that she knows quite well, she's able to say, I get it now. And she's actually able to go down and stop everybody and move forward and is able to find a fresh paw print from the creature that's dragging the bull that hasn't been smudged over by the corpse. She, it's directly behind what seems to be an uprooted, well, root. And so the bull's body just never went over this paw print location. And what is the it, size we're looking at here? It looks to be the, like, the paw print itself is probably about the size, like, it's, it's about the size of your average, like, a size and a half of your average dinner plate. It's a pretty big paw. Oh, like, yeah. You're, you're, think, you're thinking, like, tiger sized. Ooh. Oh my. Hmm. So, something like around that. Maybe a little smaller than a tiger. Somewhere between a cougar like a, a cougar and a tiger though. It's got big old pawsies though. Uh, 
Whew. Oking will start uh, writing this down because as far as he knows, he has not seen this species before. Would you give me one more intelligence check with advantage? Okay. With this motherfucker Wolfgang, I swear to God. I swear. Oh my God. To God. Wait, where'd my weed go? You try your best, but you don't succeed. <laughs> <laughs> Four and a natural one on the other side. I cannot. Ouch. Okay. Yeah, Wolfgang, you're you're having an off day. This is just like, man, I don't fucking know. We'll see it soon enough, probably. Fuck. Just thinks, fuck it. I'll take notes when it's dead. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I was in a mirror yesterday. Asshole just pulls out a cell phone and takes a pic for you. It's, it's fine. <laughs> just just, just send that to my Asmo Instagram. Get, Asmo gets a clay print. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you guys are able to track this further into the forest. And eventually, you come into a field, or what seems to be a small clearing next to a uh, little runoff pond from the rain. It seems to have developed there, and you do find the remaining corpse, the other end, that seems to have been picked clean of this beast. And here is where we will take our break. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Okay. We'll be right back. Hey guys, this is Lanny Pator, and I wanted to thank you for rolling with me. You can roll with me live Mondays at 5 o'clock Central Time on twitch.tv slash Lanny Pator. Now, back to the game. So you found your way to this clearing with your oddly identical looking uh, students on the map here. But uh, they're, they're color coded and hold on, their name should show up on there. Yep, yeah, I see them. Are they? They don't, they don't show up on the... Uh... I'm going to refresh the page over here. They showing up but for you guys? I have them on my DM nope. screen. I might have that turned off because I have a lot of settings. Oh, I see them on the battlefield. They're yeah, showing. It's just, their it's names just are showing names up for me. Their names aren't showing up for me on my screen here. This one's Horus. This one's Rebecca. This one's Enoch, and this one's Valian. Yeah. So red is Horus. Uh, blue guy is Enoch, and green guy is Valian. For everybody at home playing the home game. So Horace is red. Rebecca is Rebecca. Rebe Rebecca is blue. Rebecca Valian is girl. Is green. It, <laughs> yeah, Rebecca and you is should girl. be true to you. All right. Uh, so let me get my sound effects replaying here. Side forest day. All right, fine. I'll just unmute this one. There we go. All right, so uh, you made your way to this clearing where you found the remaining bones. Uh, there, there's actually quite a few bones around here. Some of full cows. Uh, some of just, like, you find the other half of that bull that you were looking for, and they've, they've been picked clean. Like, they have been consumed. Hmm. But this oh, is kind was... of where the trail runs dry for you. Well, someone had this snack. Hmm. This must be close to their nest. If they're nesting creatures. They're ambush predators, and moreover, they use pack tactics, so I wouldn't be surprised if they did have a nest of some sort. Does that mean they're, they're, they're nearby? No, they're right underneath you. <laughs> oh my god. Don't worry, little guy. I'll crush him for you. I just want to use my perception just to see if I hear anything. Um, Your passive perception? I mean, you hear like all the sounds of a forest, but there doesn't appear to be anything out of the ordinary for you. If you'd like I'm going to make an active act. Yeah, I want to make an active perception check. Like, I'm, I'm actually going to be searching here. Okay. 14. 
Uh, yeah, there doesn't appear to be much out of the ordinary. You can tell that this uh, body was picked clean within the past uh, seven hours or so. Oh, wow. Okay. Like, pre-dawn. Rebecca. Yes, sir. Can you check around to see if there are any predatory animals in the area that you can find? Of course. Uh, give her a survival check. With advantage as you're in... The forest. Ye. Oh. Eight. Uh, she's checking around. She, she notices that there are a couple of, like, fox burrows and things like that, but... Nothing indicating where these creatures might be holed up, at least from this position. Hmm. hmm. That probably means that most of the other predators in this area have been driven away. Yeah, she look is. Like They're ambush creatures. How do we counter that advantage they have by jumping us? Why don't we jump them? Let's lay an ambush. Oh. That's... That's... That's brilliant. I'm, I'm sorry, what was your name? Oh, hello. I am T-Wink. It is nice to meet you. That was very... Yes, if, if we have any bait, we'd be able to find them no problem. One, two, three, not it! Wait, what, what, what are we doing here? Uh, uh, go I ahead can make... and roll I... initiative for the uh, <laughs> students. <laughs> Can I, I, have cho I choose to fail. Okay. I'm just not going to say anything when they did the nodded. I don't understand what that is anyway. <laughs> 21 for Rebecca. Yeah. Not it! 18 for Valiant with a minus one. Damn. Yeah, he, he is jumpy and is immediate on it. 5 for Enoch. And then Horus. 16 for Horus. Yeah, Horus does it immediately after Valiant, and Enoch's like, wait, what are we doing? <clears throat> Who got yeah, four? Yeah, he, yeah, he stands up, he's like, it's not like it would matter anyway. We'd have to wait here till night. They're night hunters. Right? Bring what, me uh, rope. It's, it's early morning right now, correct? It's midday. You, you midday made now? To, you, yeah, you, you're... It, it's past noon. It's afternoon, but you know the sun doesn't set here for at least another three, four, five hours. For what we know, they come out at night. Which means that right now they'd be sleeping. If they sleep. That's a good point. Uh, T-Wig, you were... You look like you had something in mind. Well, I could turn into, like, a bull or an elk and just start screaming. But, like, how would that help? Well, they'd come out and be like, oh, sweet, free, free food. And then yes. all you guys would be like, bah, got them. Not a bad idea. But, like, the thing is with you, T-Wig, you always stay a little bit, um... Shiny. Yeah, but if I, I just lie on the ground on the side and just make the sounds, it's fine. That's what kind of just makes a face of. All right, maybe that'll work. Seems like a plan to me. Is there any like skin left from any of these animals that got eaten, or no? Uh, it looks like they were like cleanly picked. Piranha. Them, like, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it's it's impressive for. An impre a predator of what size you're assuming to it to be to have been able to rip the flesh cleanly off of these bones like this. Okay. I can, right. I can stay as this form for about four hours as well. you as bait, we might be able to get them out here. It depends, whatever these things are, they can even 
exist in sunlight. No matter how tempting it is, if they can't stand being in the sun, then they're like, nah, no deal. So you might want to do it near the shade. Alternately, we could find whatever hole they're hiding in and just bash them. That isn't a bad idea either. If we catch them during daytime, if they are indeed nocturnal, then we could really get the drop on them. They'll be tired and out of out of their usual comfort zone when hunting. But the trail's kind of pretty cold here. Who said that? Uh, Rebecca. But the trail had kind of run cold where they're at. Yeah, so this is it. Oh! How deep? Hold on a minute. The, uh, the dog I talked to said it had a smell to it. Do you think you'd be able to track it like that? I should be able to, if there is a smell. We can find out where that is, we can try smoking them out with some fire. Yeah, fire and then we fire. wouldn't have to leave me, you know, for being baked, more or uh, less. Let's leave, leave, leave that on the table. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> uh, the other option is I could... So there's two options here. I could be... Well, that's probably better if I'm the one, because I know what I'm looking for. Okay. Wolfgang, do you want me to assist with this? Uh, he nods. Okay. And I give, like, I look to, like, the students and give, like, a salute. Like, I'm trying to be a student and set a good example. Right. Uh, and I will transform into a dire wolf. All right. Uh, dire wolves are large creatures, I believe. It's like they a wolf, large. but dire. All right. Just a uh... Let me just find the page here for you if I can find it here. I might not have that one listed. Yeah, I don't have that one listed. Direwolf is page 321. All right. I'm a big pupper now. Big old pupper do. All right, let me get back to that screen. There we go. Sorry about that. No worries. And now you're a big pupper. Big metallic robot pupper. Yeah, the uh, students to your side just kind of like, whoa, as, you, uh, as your body begins to glow and you become as dog. All right. Uh, I have advantage on wisdom perception checks that rely on smell. So I'm going to smell around these bodies and see if I can pick up the smell of the uh, the creatures. All right. Uh, perception with advantage. Yep. Perception with advantage. 18. Sure enough, you get a scent, and it is a familiar scent. You've smelled this creature before. Okay. You just kind of perk up, and I look at Wolfgang. Hmm. Uh, it, Horus looks at you. What is it, girl? I kind of I looked at Horus and like narrowed the eye slots. So sorry. I, I had a dog when I was younger. <clears throat> I'm gonna smell the ground, and I'm gonna very slowly try and follow if there's any trail. Give it a follow. Right. Uh, there, there is a trail. It leads kind of towards the water, and uh, towards that little ridge under the water there. Oh. You see that it kind of burrows off into a uh, cave in that way. I'll do like the 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 hunting dog point. <laughs> that way. Huh. Makes sense. Any beast would try to be near fresh water, I suppose. <clears throat> Asmo jumps down and starts slowly slinking. All right. 
Uh, the students all make their way up toward that way. Uh, the water's about waist deep. Valiant's kind of getting in your personal space. Sorry. Do not get not in my get personal in. space. Eh, eh, there. As the kids kind of like move forward to like look into the cave. Yeah, I'm going to make sure I'm ahead of the kids. Wolfgang! Is Wolfgang just sitting there with a gun? Keep walking. <laughs> Move! I'll be... Uh, I was watching behind us. Uh. Who knows how intelligent these creatures are. I'll keep a lookout behind us. See, I think the oh, prey are smart. sitting in there. Hogan. Hey, sir. You're coming too. You got it. He just keeps marching forward. You've noticed he's been very hands off this entire time, just watching them try to learn from you. And he tries to stay kind of like to the back of the groom uh, group group in that respect. Yeah. And so, uh, you all decide to enter this cave here? Yeah. Alright. You make your way into this cave as the... Smell of fresh blood, or the smell of blood, and you notice that there's more bones in here than, uh, there were outside. And, Twig, with your passive perception, you can... First of all, here the the bats that seem to be sleeping down here. Kind of, like, I'm gonna scan them. <laughs> yeah, there's just some sleepy bats above your head, uh, kind of further into the cave that you can see with the still natural light coming in from the uh, cave entrance. You see the bones on the ground, and that scent is still very. Oh, sorry, you're, you're still a wolf. Yeah, I'm still a big boy. That. Eh, eh, eh. You're you're rubbing up against the wall. Sure. Now you're rubbing up against Asmo. There we go. <laughs> and you can smell, uh, first of all, the, the blood in here is very evident as you move forward there. You can get a slightly better view of... I do not have dark vision as a dire wolf. I'm going to say this now. Okay. Then, yeah, so... that, that, that's about accurate as to what you can see from where you're at. Okay. I'm going to just, like, kind of low growl sort of noise and kind of turn to Asmo and Wolfgang. And as you make that low growl, you can kind of hear some shifting in the cave along the sides, a little, like, the, 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 the very subtle sound of, like, kind of a, a, a creeping, I don't know, it, it sounds like, it sounds like a bag of sand touching the floor. Like, it's very subtle, but you, you have very high senses. And you can hear what seems to be kind of like a grumble and a subtle mewling, like oh, coming from around the corner. Can my so, allies hear it or just me? Uh, you you can hear it very clearly. Everybody else would have to make a very active roll, but you have a very high passive perception. Yeah. Uh, should. <clears throat> Should we go ahead from here, sir? Enoch says as he's pulling out a torch. Uh, Wolfgang will hold up his hand and tell him not to use the torch. Hang on, I'm going <clears> to... <throat> Actually, yeah, I actually don't know which of this... I don't know which of these races have... Uh... Dark vision. The half elf does. I think that's about it, actually. Mm -hmm. T one keeps barking. Sorry, I'm very yeah, Jack, Jack, Jackie. Jackie followed you. Jackie, no! Hi, 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 hi. Yep, yeah, that's, that's that barking at leaves be. out there. <laughs> they're, hey, they're, awaiting, hey. they're awaiting. They're awaiting on your order, Wolfgang. Basically, because. Uh, um. They, they, you found the lair. Now it's up to you whether or not the students should hunt. They don't have dark vision. 
Um, but one of them does. One of them does. All right. Um, Rebecca is also a half elf. Yeah, she's she's the half elf. Uh, Valiant is also a half elf. That's right. He is. Okay, you got two half elves. Uh, I'll say, all right. <clears throat> Lightbrand, Whisperwind, you're with us. Okay. They uh, move forward. The rest of you watch the entrance until we signal you. Then come further. Horace kind of like you can hear like an audible sigh from Horus a little bit. Don't worry, you'll get your action. I was led to believe this would uh, be our hunt, sir. I'm sorry. I'm a little antsy. We're all a little antsy. Trying to look out for your well being here as well. <coughs> All right, now I'll uh, I'll move forward with the rest of the. All right, these two step forward with you, and Dark the, the moment you do so, out of the shadows, leaps a creature that you've seen before. A massive, betentacled, cat-like creature leaps towards oh. Valiant. Oh no! Oh fuck! And Kitty slide. weapons! <laughs> Roll Shit. initiative as Valian Six Fuck definitely gets hit. And Six. is about Six. to take some kitty whipping damage. As I also find some combat music. <laughs> Oh, now the other one's playing. Oh, look at that! All the initiative. Oh, you gotta yell at those at those initiatives. Yeah, there. I, 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 I need know. to hear them. I'll do them all at once. So, Asmo got six. Pee got a fifteen. Wow. <laughs> Oh, Damn. everybody did really well on their initiatives. Wolfgang got an 18. Valiant got a 17. Rebecca got a 21. Enos Asma got, got a, a 20. As got a 6, because I, I, I want to believe everyone just barrels over him. Ah! Horace got a 19. whether you want to act or if you want your students to handle this. But remember, this is their lesson. So, Valian has taken, uh, as he gets leapt upon by this displacer beast, uh, he takes... Frax might be six. There's one. Four points of slashing damage. Okay. All right, and uh, surprise round is over. It is now Rebecca's turn. Am I controlling them for this? You, uh, you do have control over them, but uh, I will, uh, I will say that you can issue orders to them on your turn, but uh, I will be giving them their uh, directions, basically. They, they will choose whether or not to ignore your command. <laughs> so, uh, being right next to it, she was not ready for this to happen, but she pulls out a dagger and goes for it. Go ahead and roll a dagger attack for her. Actually, I, I can do that too, but... Uh, 13. Uh, and as she tries to swing out at it, 
Uh, it seems to kind of like shimmer in place in the shadows, but she catches it right on the side. Roll damage. Three piercing. All right, as a slice goes into this beast, it lets out a uh, cruel hiss towards her. And that will... Uh, She's currently engaged with the beast. She's going to try to maneuver herself to get a better vantage. Uh, I'm going to roll something real quick to help determine her best course of action. All right. She's smart. She's going to elbow past you, Asmo, and get back this way. She takes an attack of opportunity, though, doesn't she? Cause she just uh, she's, the it is not engaged with her. But, yes, she will uh, get swiped at from this thing real quick. Especially with all the tails, all the tentacles. Yeah. It misses. Okay. Yay! Ooh. All right. We're it's like, on it's like extreme jump rope. Uh, Enoch is going to notch his. Uh, Enoch has notched his crossbow and is going to fire a shot with that. All right. Twelve. And as he fires, he thinks he's getting a clean shot, but it seems to pass straight through the beast as it clatters into the back of the cave. Clack, 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 clack. He seems very confused as he goes back to reload his crossbow with his movement. Uh, next up in the initiative, we have the beast itself, who currently is clawing and pawing at Valiant here. Uh, I should at least move him back to where he should be. There we go. And he's going to try to make another claw against Valiant. This time, Valiant uh, holds up his shield and manages to keep the weapons away from his face. So it misses Valiant. Right. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Horus! Oh, he's been ready for this. He's gonna bam, 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 swing heavily with his warhammer down towards this thing's skull. Twelve. And just as he thought he was about to make contact, woof, bong, hits the ground. What the? Lifts his hammer back up and uh, readies himself for his next attack. But that, unfortunately, he does not have a second one yet, so that is his turn. Wolfgang, you're up. I... am going to pull out Crescendo and Requiem but I'm going to take the dodge action. Okay. So any attack made against you will be at disadvantage. Do you have anything you want to say to your troops? Can they respond to me? Yeah. It's a free action to talk. All right. Does anybody know what this is? You're getting a lot of uh, negatory responses around you. Valiant is desperately trying to hold this thing's like tentacles back with its with his shield as Horus is gearing up to strike it again. It's just a stupid fucking cat. All right, Horus, Valiant, sandwich it between you two. Enoch, Rebecca, get it a distance. Don't take a shot until you have it. Yes, sir. Got it. All right. Uh, now it is, uh, unless you have a move you want to make, uh, movement. Uh, uh, any dodge is just the first attack made against me, right? Not. Uh, yeah, it's uh... just, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's any attack made against you. I'm pretty sure you hold it for the entire turn. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm almost positive it's a... Because you're making a defensive stance. I'm pretty sure it's you're preparing yourself for attack. So, yeah, it's any attack made against you. Okay. Uh, in that case, I will... Uh, yeah, until the start of, of your next turn. Yeah. I will get out of my student's way. All right. It will try to take a swipe at you, realizing that you're moving away from it. Jesus. Okay, uh, that is disadvantage. 
That is a 24 to hit. Damn. It rolled an yeah. 18 and a 19. Damn. Damn. That hits. All right. That is uh, seven points of slashing damage as you get raked across the back, uh, moving away from this thing. Yeah. All right. Valiant is going to take up your advice keep pushing back at this thing's shield against it as he moves to this side and he is very timid like he's fumbling with his spear right now uh, but he uh, just kind of throws a thrust forward kind of haphazardly trying to get this thing with his spear alright hit him with a spear 10 but he kind of like looks away as he's trying to do it. Like just poke, poke. Uh, and the creature's just kind of slapping it from side to side as he's doing that. Horace is just kind of shaking his head in disappointment. Uh, T-Wig, you're up. Okay. I am going to move. This is a stalactite here. There is a piece of darkness. Yeah, stalag kind of might, technically. That is true. In fact, that stalag does reach the ceiling. I have... How much feet of movement do I have? I have too many books! God damn it. Uh, okay. I should have used a bookmark. Oh, I have... Kurt, I'm gonna fight you. No. 15, 30... Okay, since you're there, you have this vision now of this area. Five, I'm gonna park my butt right here. I'm gonna run around with my full 50 feet of movement. Oh, you're, and... drifting, you're drifting through the middle of the cave. Damn it. Damn it. Deja vu. Um, and I am going to use the help action with Spear Gentleman here. Uh, you can aid a friendly creature in attacking a creature within five feet of you. You feign distract the target in some other way. Team up to make your allies' attacks more effective. Okay, so the next attack he'll make will be at advantage. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. All right. And that will end my turn. Awesome. Asmo, it's your turn. Asmo picks himself off after everyone shoved him. He fell down. Ah! Ah! Asmo... Is gonna roll up behind. Who was the red one again? Uh, that one's Horus. He's got a big old hammer in his hands. Hey, Bell Breaker, what did I say? Asmo pulls out a fire ant. Uh, however, Asmo is going to uh, take a holding action. Asmo is gonna try and block a hit if a hit comes towards Horus. I think uh, I think you need a specific fighting style. Yeah, oh, that's really? a oh. that's yeah, a, you, that's that's, a that's, shield that's, ability. Yeah, yeah oh, that's, okay, uh, that makes sense. Protector is the fighting style you need for that. Oh, well yeah. there you go. More I know. Oh, that's that's. Oh yeah, I gotta be a wow tank for that. Mm. Um, you still throw what? some friendly advice his way, or? You may be distracted. You might be distracted by the tentacles. Don't. That's the point. Just, just hit him like right in the head. Just really hard. Right the, really, really hard. That's the best way of doing this. And I like hearing that. I'm aiding him. All right. Uh, Rebecca's up. And now that uh, she's been told what to do, she's going to try to get a better angle on this bro here. Slides this way. And she's going to use her bow. Okay. She notches an arrow. Twelve. That's Horus. You just used Horus. Yeah, you oh, Horus. shit. What the? Have a short Wait a minute. That's weird. Oh, no. That that was Rebecca. I just have it listed as as Horus. Like, I, I could do it again. You know, Oh, Salem's here now. Oh. I didn't know that was a thing you could do. That's interesting. Yeah, it's right next to the send button. You can go through oh, all the okay. characters. Okay. 
Well, yes. she fires and uh, unfortunately it kind of clatters against. Uh, once again, it just does not seem to give purchase despite the fact she thinks she's getting like a solid body shot on the thing. Wait a minute. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I was, she, I was, <laughs> I've never played a ranger before, so. She looks, she looks a little unnerved, but she's going to use her bonus action to uh, hunter's mark this thing to try to give herself Ooh. a better, a better chance at it. And while Enoch is going to do a similar thing, pull up, uh, kind of crouch down to get a good angle on it, and he's going to fire with his crossbow. All right. Enoch. Seventeen. Oh. But unfortunately, as a displacer beast, the attack is with disadvantage. Oh, no. And his uh, bowstring snaps as it's been wound a little too taut. So while he thinks he has a perfect bead on it, his weapon malfunctions and he has to use his turn to fix it. Damn. A little glint runs over its eyes as it begins to uh, swing towards the large beast at its side. T-Wig, it's going to oh try boy. to give a slap at you. Uh -oh. uh, does, a, does a 12 hit? No, it misses. All right. Uh, you managed to nimbly dodge away as it sends a whip in your direction. I like try and grab it in my mouth and just kind of hold it in place to assist my ally. All right. And in doing so... Uh, it is now Horus's turn, who takes this time to make this attack without disadvantage. In fact, since, yeah, without disadvantage and plus three. So go ahead and roll a Warhammer attack for him, and then add three. 15 plus three is 18. All right, sure enough, with your, uh, with your guidance there, Asmo, he swings it down and cracks it right on the side of the head. Roll damage. For bludgeoning. Is that a one or a two on the dice? That is one, and he has great weapon master. Yep, so roll that sucker again. Oh, nice. That is a D10, so. And then add strength. Yeah, I think you just click Warhammer again. But... Nine. So then add his strength to that. And Plus again, three 12 is damage. 12 damage. Yeah, he cra creams this thing aside the head. Ah! Don't like that so much, do ya? Wolfgang, you're up. Wow. Hmm. We fought these things before. We did. Remember. Remember. Hmm. Definitely were. Definitely were some pack tactics going on last time we fought these things. So I am going to reposition myself again, and I'm going to try to look down this way to see if there are any more. All right. Uh, go ahead and give me a perception check. 21. Sure enough, you look down that way, and you do see another one. It's laying on its side, and there are what appear to be some small no! shapes pawing at its back. No! Don't do this to us! It appears to be nursing some young. But And it looks at you, and it, like, kind of glares, but it's not moving. How big are the baby's eyes? You can't see them. They're 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 in its mommy's belly right now, just like suckling some milk. Would I know if displacer beasts are just sort of a naturally occurring thing? That can can there just be displacer beasts here? Like on your plane of existence? Go ahead yeah. And give me a uh, intelligence check with advantage. I know these have gone oh so well so far. Yeah. 11. You haven't heard cases of it, and your first real experiences with them were in that alternate dimension, but clearly they mate. Hmm. 
I'm gonna shout at Tiwig. Tiwig! This is their den. They have pups. Oh, no. And this uh, one in the middle that's still, like, kind of shaking its head left and right is uh, ferociously trying to fight back against you guys right now. Is that the end of your turn? Yeah, I'm not sure what to do. That's why I'm consulting T-Wig. I'm the, I'm the exterminator. T-Wig's the one that knows animals. Oh, shit. no. Hearing that, Valian is now incredibly conflicted. Uh, the kind-hearted soul he is. And... He thinks to himself probably a little too long. But then a light comes over his eyes. And he holds out his hand and fires a guiding bolt at the one in front of him. Oh shit. Go ahead and roll that. Valian. And this will be with, uh, not advantage, but just a straight roll without plus, disadvantage. Well, well, flanking as well, right? Uh, since it's currently engaged with T-Wig, yes. All right. So plus three. Let's see if, <laughs> let's see if Valian can learn from the master. 24. Damn. That will certainly hit this beastie. Go ahead and mm. use its damage. 11 radiant. And you can see as this guiding bolt's energy just ignites this creature with a holy fire that the uh, exterior of it, that shadowy cloak that seemed to fade over it, you can see its true body within. From now on, all attacks, or the next attack does not have disadvantage, and anybody that would have advantage should have advantage on it. Don't worry. They can be safe. But we still have to stop this one for right now, I think. Old and just not. Uh, T Wig, you're up. Okay. All right. You, you hear the hiss. You hear the hiss of a uh, very angry, displaced beast mama behind you, but it's not moving as its pups are feeding, and she is tired. Okay. 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 Um. This is gonna be crazy, but this will work. I am going to move over here. I'm gonna provoke an attack of opportunity. All right, uh, it'll do so. And when you do so, the uh, Mama Displacer Beast stands up and gets between you and its cubs. Okay. Uh, attack of opportunity. There's a, yeah, 20 hits. Him. That's absolutely gonna hit, yeah. Uh, seven points of slashing damage from the tentacle. Okay. I'm going to drop my form. <laughs> Stay over here. I'm going to summon eight wolves with Conjure Animal. I hate you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> One. Two. <laughs> three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Four. Seven. Eight. All right. Now, I'm going to command these wolves. Two of them are going to distract mom, and the rest of them are going to grab the cubs by the scruff of the neck. <laughs> okay. And run out of the cave with them. <laughs> All right. This is a home invasion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. kidnapping their children. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, there, there are, uh, there are four pups. Okay. Perfect. Um, can I just roll one initiative roll for all the wolves just to Please make life do. easier? 
please. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's gonna be what I'm gonna do for this one. Just I'm wait sorry. till I learn animate objects, Monty. Oh god. I will murder you. I'm sorry, Lanny. I always look at like spoons and shit. Hey Thank Nick, God I'm I a fighter. Thank I don't God I have this generic smiley face token. Natural 20 for the wolves. I'm just going to say they go immediately after you then. All right, that's what they're going to do. I'm going to have, uh, actually, since there's only four cubs, I'm going to have each wolf flank mom. So four of them flank mom. Okay. And the rest of them are going to grab pups and are going to run. Or as they're like hopping around, just uh, the, the mom immediately starts going into a defensive position here as the other ones start to run in towards her pups. <laughs> I... And they grab the pups. Next turn, they'll be able to run out with them. Okay. Is... You can't imagine they're like a perfect line all in sync walking. All right. Uh, with that, the new Displacer Beast is now in action. And it goes, ironically, right after T-Wig would have anyway. So, it is now going to make an attack on the ones that are trying to go for its pups. Okay. That's a natural 20. Okay. That, that is some Mama Fury right there. That is Mama Fury. I, I respect it. That's 8 plus... 7... That's 21 points of damage to the unmarked wolf. Yeah, unmarked wolf is it's gone. It's dead. Yeah, it, it's its head gets removed cleanly, like anime style, by one of these tentacles that just as it was going for one of its pups. That is fair. And it growls and hisses at the rest of them. I am going to make an intimidation check against the rest of these dogs. Uh, they're not tech. Mm, I think they're technically fey creatures I control. I don't think they would have to make. So, are they, so are they not actual wolves? They're not technically wolves, but let me just double check here. All right, because the intimidation uh, check. Is they're a technically seven. spirits. You summon fey spirits that take the form of beasts. Okay. Um, each beast is also considered fey. Uh, it, it disappears when it drops to zero hit points or when the spell ends. The summer creatures are friendly to you and your companions. Uh, they obey any commands. They defend themselves from hostile creatures, but otherwise take no actions. Okay, so... so. It, it, it feebly gives a very vicious roar at them. Rolled a 17 on its intimidation check, but they seem unfazed by this. Asmo, you're up. Asmo, um... As Asmo's just, like, seeing all this happening. Uh, Asmo's just gonna keep encouraging the, uh... the boys to keep... keep on the... the uh, kitty weapons. Yeah, if you, if you get up in the monster's grill, you can give one of them advantage on attacks. So you cut out there, Nick? I said if you get up in the monster's grill, you can give uh, Horus advantage on attacks if you want. I'm going to give him advantage. I'll step up then. All right, cool. So you're there yeah. to distract the, the beastie. Yep. And or take over if things get too dicey. Rebecca's turn again. She's going to make another shift to get another angle on this creature. And we'll attempt to fire again, this time without disadvantage. All right, Miss Whisperwind. Come on, Rebecca. 21. Nice. And she hits it. Go ahead and roll damage for her and then give her Hunter's Mark. Seven piercing damage and Hunter's Mark, four. Four, all right. So that's a total of 11 points of damage. As this creature now is... Uh, trying to use its tentacle, as the tentacle is coming down to try to slap at uh, Asmo who's approaching the tentacle <clears throat> the arrow goes straight through the base of it and the creature roars with very dissatisfied service uh, Enoch who is, fi who is finished repairing his crossbow is going to shift over and make another shot Okay. 
grab him real quick. Nine. Yeah, unfortunately, that one misses. He goes and he reloads. Enoch's having a rough time. He, he can't quite see in the shadows here. So he's having a rough time of it. Displace a beast who just got clocked on the side of the head and shot by an arrow is going to uh, notice that there's a bunch of wolves around his mates and his pups and is going to rush back this way. Everybody around him gets an attack of opportunity. So Horus is going to try to make his. Oh, yeah, go ahead and roll for Horus. I'm sorry, I'm not rolling for them. Horus, would, would that... 13 hits. All right. Four bludgeoning. Oh, another one. Yeah, Reroll. Reroll that. One sec. Horace is typing something. Max oh, damage. Damn. There damn, you go. Damn, damn. Plus three. Plus three is 13. Shit, Horace. All right. So he like clobbers this thing like right on the side of the hip as it's trying to run away. Uh, Valiant, meanwhile, is going to attempt to spear. A spear. My God. Yeah. Soft 20. By God, that hits. Five. All right, he gets a uh, meaty stab in on this thing. Asmo, do you want to take an attack on it as it's fleeing towards the... I, I will opt to not. Ah! Boom, boom. Able to get to this red wolf that's attacking its mate or harassing his mate and babies. Yeah, uh, twenty-five will certainly. Oh that yeah, thing. that will absolutely it. Uh, that is eight points of slashing damage. Wolf is still alive. As its ether gets streaked across, the creature lives. All right. Horus. Hey, where are you going, you shit? Get back here! Hey, hey, no! Can I grab him? Uh, you can... He's leaving my, he's leaving my area. Can I grab him? You have not made your reaction. Yes, I will let you attempt to make an athletics check against him. Alrighty. All right, here we go. Seven. Connor, would you roll an athletics check for Horace? Six. Oh! Wow. Hey! Wow. Yeah, you managed, you managed three, to grab two. him by the scruff of his neck as he's about to go. And he... Don't interrupt someone in the middle of a plan. That's how you fuck up a plan. It's about to fuck up her plan. What do you mean? You can see as this thing is tearing at the wolves. We don't want that. No. And that's his turn now. I know. Um. You're blind, idiot. Yeah, yeah, Wolfgang, it is your turn. <laughs> uh, free action will say, Asmo. You're what? a bloody idiot. I didn't know I was gonna affect it. I thought we wanted to keep them all alive now that there's babies. I can bring uh, it back. I, I might be able to keep it alive if we can just keep it on the cusp of death, Valiant says. But with two of them here, it's... I don't, I don't know if we can... Huh. We need to move them is all. Get them out of here. Tiwi, get those cubs out of here! Yeah, I'm working on it! See, Rebecca, this is what I call an improvised plan. <laughs> I just right. look back. Enoch, Rebecca, get outside! Yes, sir. Take up firing positions at the at the head of the mouth of the cave. Yes, sir. They say go as go for non-lethal. Oh, Gregor. The Valiant moves. Gregor. To, another, to a position <laughs> over here. And tries to fire another guiding bolt at the uh, beast. I think that's his last spell too. Uh, he has one more. Okay, he has one more after that. Awesome. Guiding bolt on this guy. Fourteen. That would be 12, unfortunately. Oh, right, right, right. He does not, he has disadvantage. So that's going to miss as it uh, 
just kind of arcs and does not quite penetrate the natural magical energy that seems to surround this thing as the shadow kind of consumes the bolt. Ugh, I must have held back, I'm sorry. It's okay, I just give him a pat on the back. All right, T-Wig, it's your turn. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, that's way too big. It's not gonna work. Uh, and I have to maintain concentration. I am going to... Uh, I want to distract Dad. All right. How do you gonna, uh, how do you intend to do so? I am going to full on run, sprint, and I'm gonna football tackle the displacer beast and like cover its eyes. All right. Uh, that's technically a grapple, I think. So give me a athletics check against the beast. Can I? No, it has to be athletics. That's right. Yeah, because you're here. You're I go. Attacking. Minus one strength. The way. Twelve. It rolled a two on the die, so you beat it. Yes, I grab. You, I'm you, riding you, on the back of it, holding its eyes closed. Yeah, you Hanna Barbera roll and end up on its back, holding its eyes as its tentacles try to whip at you. I yell at the wolves. I go, get the little ones and run outside. All right, the orange one will now take up the wolf, or the cub that the other one couldn't as the green one begins to flee. Uh, this daddy no longer sees, so it can't make the attack on this thing. I mean, it can at disadvantage. And fails. I I'm assuming that the wolf's AC is higher than 10. Oh yeah, it's, it's okay. higher than that. Uh, they uh, also what's the movement speed, speed on them? 40 feet, so if they can take the dash action, they will take the dash action as well to right. take the I'm going to say grabbing the cup that's, that's is completely fair. part of it. So. so, 40 feet, then. Take the kitties. Take the kitties and run. He's still almost going to make it out. Nice. As Pogan is going to step outside to make room for uh, Rebecca and Enoch. Well, Pinky here is going to make there. Uh, yellow mama's gonna take an uh, attack of opportunity on seeing that it's going for its babies. Yellow one, for sure. Uh, does a 13 hit, or sorry, that 14 hit. That just hits, yeah. Okay. Uh, that is 12 damage. Pops, it's down. There's another kitten on the. There's another cub on the loose. Orange grabs and. Moves. That spends its. That spends its reaction though. Yeah, the, its reaction is now gone. And seeing that that's there, the blue one is going to pick up the other cub and move. The fucking children conveyor belt. Let's do it. Yep. <laughs> and the other two are still available for other actions. Okay, I want them to. Um, they don't have puppies or kittens. Sorry. Um, a little further than that. I don't want them to leave the combat space. I'm gonna have the red one stay where it is, but I want the purple one to go around the other side of Mama. Okay, jumps around the other side of Mama, who's currently panicking and jumping around and still seems very tired. I'm gonna have them both take the dodge action. Okay. So basically, they're not attacking, so they're just going to be kind of on standby. Okay. Uh, Mama immediately begins pursuing its babies, so these things can make attacks of opportunity against Mama. Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll go for that. That'll be uh, non-lethal. Uh, Red Wolf, 10. It's going to miss. Purple Wolf. 19. Disadvantage. 20. So. Still, okay, so uh, purple okay. wolf hits. Technically, there's no disadvantage because they have pack tactics. Oh, true. My bad. Yeah. So, yeah, hits. Uh, Why Jesus. don't we call them pack ticks? I just, I don't know. 
Because s'more flavored Oreos aren't called s'moreos, the world isn't fair. Four plus two. Eight points of damage to mom. All right. Mama, who by the way already seemed a little weak, uh, does not seem happy with that. But she continues pursuing her babies and can get to Horus. Uh, but then he kind of bars her path. All right, next up, we got Asmo. Asmo, um... Oh, man. How many... Sorry, above game, how many uh, cubs are they trying to get out? So are the four of them mostly out? Uh, the, four, uh, the four wolves that ran by you all have one displacer kitten in their mouth. Okay. And they, they, they don't even have their eyes open yet. They're just tiny oh, little Oh god, Lanny, don't do this fluffs. to me. No, they're tiny little fluffs. And they're little they're oh. little weapons. They're like oh. so they, they don't have fur on them yet, and they're just kinda dangly there. They look a little gross. I don't know what to do in this situation. I feel so morally gray. I know. Do you do you save the orphans or do you eat them? Aw oh, man, I hate that it's one or the other. Hmm. Gregor, no, calm down. Don't look at me with guilt. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't. Gregor, you wouldn't. Gregor's, right, mm, he's making noise because he wants to go out for WALK. Aww. But he doesn't understand that my emotions are going for a WALK right now. Uh, okay. All right. All right, Asmo's going to do what he can. Asmo's going to roll forward up on the first displacer piece closest to him, and Asmo's uh, going to smack it with the short sword. All right, go for it. 11. All right, that's going to miss this beast as it kind of ducks out of your way. Well, it's my main hand, so I'm going to swing down with a short sword again. 26. Nice. 26 will hit, as with the 18. Eight piercing. All right, it lets out a massive howl, and you can see the uh, its mate react distinctively to that cry as T-Wig's slowly getting jostled on its back. Ah, I am not made for this! All right, that is your second attack. I wish I could do, can I do subdue damage? Uh, yes, but it would be 1d4 instead of your normal attack damage. Sorry, you cut out there, because 1d? Yes, you can, it'd be a d4 if you make another hit against it. Basically, you're trying to club it with the blunt part of your weapon. Yeah. I count that as kind of a club damage. All right, I'll, I'll be doing that with uh, just uh, my dagger, a simple okay, so dagger. Because I'm trying to smack it with the pommel. Go ahead. Yeah. Eleven. Unfortunately, that's going to miss. As you try to streak your hand down, uh, you're hitting what you think is the beast, but your hand swings through a bunch of shadow. All right, back up to Rebecca, who's going to follow Wolfgang's orders attempt to flee among the fleeing babies, uh, taking, yeah, she's gonna take the dash action to get where she needs to go. Trusting, uh, trusting your instincts, Wolfgang. Followed by Enoch, who, uh, does similar. Enoch. Yeah. Uh, next up, Wolf, uh, T-Wig, this thing is going to try to wriggle you off it real quick here. Okay. So make an athletics check first. Never mind. That is a nat twenty. You are, yeah, you are getting flopped unless you unless you roll a nat twenty. So you know I'll give you the chance. Let's go. Fifteen. All right. It it bucks you off its back. You get slapped off with some tentacles, and it immediately Fail. rushes to its mate. Uh, you get an attack of opportunity if you'd like. Uh, I don't have a weapon on me, so. I thought you did. So you, you had a scimitar. Yeah, it's like part of me, but I don't have it out right now, and I don't really want to hurt this thing. You're conflicted. I'm conflicted. Smack it on the ass. <laughs> <laughs> emotionally, save your reaction. Emo emotionally, uh, it, I don't know what to do. It immediately leaps to its mate's aid, and uh, noticing that you have weapons in your hand, Asmo, it slaps at you with its tentacle. Uh oh. Uh, that is a uh, twenty, uh, twenty-two to hit. Yeah, that hits. All right. Ooh! That is 11 points of slashing damage as a tentacle slaps you across the face, uh, trying to peel you apart from its mate. 
Ah, B. Oh man, yeah, I get smacked. Yeah, you get you get smacked good. Uh, it is now Horus's turn. Who, you know, it's been working so far. He's just gonna try to clatter Mama with the hammer. He doesn't know restraint. Oh wait, yeah, go ahead, Wolfgang, roll that for me. Uh, which one? Who is this? Horus. Horus, right? With the Warhammer. Twenty-two. Uh, that's or eleven. Eleven, but that eleven is plus three because he's flanking currently, so that does hit. All right. Eight. Eight bludgeoning damage to Mama as she gets. She appears to be really dizzy from that hammer shot. She is barely on her legs right now. Uh, Wolfgang, it is now your turn. As Horus does not choose to move. Uh... I'm gonna... Retreat with the wolves and cover their escape. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shout to uh, everybody. We're leaving. Don't have to tell me we're twice, sir. We're gonna lead the displacer beast out into the open. You get, a, you get a call the affirmative as uh, Horus kind of like nods after smacking Mama upside the head with the hammer. All right, it is now Valiant's turn. He's going to. best effort he is going to make uh, one more attempt at a guiding bolt against the uh, male which is next to Asma. Yay! Oh Let's wait, no! Boo! A guiding bolt on this boy. Guiding bolt is last spell. Boo! Natural one. Oh no. As Wolf King, he ain't. As it blasts, it goes off in his face. He is now considered blinded. Uh, That's a good slash bang off in his face. Boom. Mop. 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 Ah! Mop. That's him, T Wig. It is now your turn. Okay. This is so silly, but I want to do it. Do it. I'm gonna use half my movement to mount on top of the uh, the red wolf, like ride it like a horse. Okay. Is is it big enough to be mounted? It's a medium creature. I think that's the same size as a horse. It's gonna look amusing. All right. Let me I'll, let me look I'll, up I'll, a horse I'll... real fast and just double check that a pony actually probably had more equivalent size. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Now, 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 now I... no dogs are just short horses. Tiny horses. With bad backs. Uh, sorry, I'm just double checking just to make sure. Uh, I'm, I'm saying I'll allow it. For okay, a yeah, I can't find it anyway. The red uh, dot on you mule, is, mule is riding the wolf. A mule is a medium creature, so that works. Uh, all right, I'm gonna mount it. I'm gonna order the red one to full on dash me out of here, and the purple one to move that way right there in that spot all right purple one will do and so the rest of them just do what they were doing before because they're doing their jobs right but to dash so all right i'm gonna get them all together so i can copy and paste them where they need to go for sure and then they skedaddle then i have 40 feet of movement 15 30 10. so i'm gonna take an attack of opportunity from dad as I ride past. Sure thing. Dad's gonna swing at you. Uh, does a 14 hit you? No, it misses. Alright, then Dad misses. As I run past uh, Wolfgang, I'm gonna turn to go, It's not kidnapping, it's accidental adoption! What? We're not taking them home with us, T Week. All right. 
well said. Mo moving everything where it needs to go. Uh, next up, we have Mama Displacer Beast, who is... Uh, Mumsy. Mimsy Displacer Beast, who is very upset that her children are being peeled away from her. Uh, she is going to... Uh, first off, attack this man in front of her. Well, actually, no. She's her number one priority is getting those kittens back. So she's moving past Asmo and you, and uh, it takes an attack of opportunity by Horus real quick. Go ahead and roll that for me. Ready? Uh, would that, that be with with that plus three? God damn, Horus is on fucking point. Go ahead and roll the damage. Twelve. Wow! Mama said knock you out. Bam! Oh. As she tries to run by, Horace, clam! Bam! Right in the face. Like, it, it, like, the nuzzle almost goes concave. As this hammer creams on the side of it. Just right there. Uh, Daddy is not happy, but it's not Daddy's turn. That's, that's Mama. All right. Uh, next up, Asmo. Does Asmo see that poor? Who's who's the one who's blinded? Is that uh? That's Valiant. Uh, you saw a massive flash go off to your side. It was almost kind of blinding to you, so you didn't look directly at it. But as your eyes readjust to the darkness, you see him just kind of like flailing his hands out in front of him. Okay, Asmo's gonna disengage. Okay. And approach him carefully. Asmo disengages and goes right up to Valian and slaps him in the face and grabs his hand. All right. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hold on to my hand tight. Okay. Are the creatures still okay? As it looks over his shoulders, the one that's being <laughs> that got maced. Yeah, it's uh, there's there's a pool of blood slowly eking out of its face right now. Okay, so uh, I'm, can I Please, grab him? Please, if they aren't, take me to any of them that are, well, dead. Asmo, Asmo can dying. I grab him and make him walk with me? Yes, with the rest of your movement. All right, I get him here. He's pretty much steps. He's gonna be stepping on the creature essentially. All right, he feels it and he feels that it's it's still breathing but definitely dying. Oh my. Okay. Uh, Rebecca and Enoch hey. are still prepped outside. Splacer Beast, the first, uh, seeing its mate die, needs to make a priority check, so I'm gonna roll something for it. Alright. Uh, it runs for its children. Horus has already used his attack of opportunity, so anybody else can make an attack of opportunity against it as it runs. Oh my goodness, really? Tea wig, I think, is the only uh... one can make it. Well, my wolf. And the, and, the, and the purple wolf. The purple wolf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, purple wolf. 22. Yeah, me. Asmo. All right, Asmo, that hits. Nine damage. All right, nine damage to Papa. All right, uh, wolf, Wolfo is going to go 14 for the first roll, and then it's disadvantage, correct? Yeah, because you don't have a second wolf. That's a natural one. Yeah, it, it just misses entirely. It, it bites, it, like, it chips at one of its phantom teeth on some rock. Um. Yeah, there's something I can do. I'm I'm not a great physical fighter, so I. You know what? Wolf you King yelled your, at me to punch your... it in the butt, so I'm gonna try punching it in the butt. With I'm the also gonna say your tray. red wolf can take a bite at it as, as it's running by. Yeah, that's what I did for that roll. Oh, that was what that roll was. The purple yeah. wolf also had an attack on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll take that one then too. Uh, seven, nine. It's not gonna hit. Nah. Nah. I'm gonna try and punch it. Go ahead and try to punch it in the butt. I'm gonna try and punch it in the butt because Wolfgang told me to do that. So It'll be just a general strength check. <laughs> with this advantage. Sixteen and eight. Unfortunate, but no. Yeah. Uh, I it did gets, try. It, it gets out of the cave. And let's see, what are we up to now? Uh, Horus is going to chase after it. Ah! A nod as he does so, Wolfgang. Uh, Wolfgang, it is now your turn. I'll look back to Valiant. Valiant, are you all right? Yes, I I just want to save this creature. 
Do what you have said, to, but don't make it too healthy. Of course. He's like reaching out his hands to it and just trying to like feel it. That I that will. that is that is not that is its that is that is its nipples. Da- higher. Oh. Sorry. I thought I was reading Braille. Right, Wolfgang, <laughs> Who wrote on this cave? cat? <laughs> wow, that was sad. Da, ha. Wolfgang exits the cave to rejoin everybody out there, and we'll see yeah. what's happening out there in just a moment as it's currently Valiant's turn. Uh, he is going to use the spell Spare the Dying. Hey. Since it's at zero hit points, he can stabilize this creature, and I'm going to say that it is now unconscious rather than dead. It's now just pops back out. <laughs> Yeah, he, he managed to, like, fuse some of the bones together and stop some of the massive bleeding as he's sitting in here uh, trying to stabilize this creature. This might take me a moment to make sure that it's safe. All right. Uh, T-Wig, it is now your turn, along with the wolves who are still okay. out there. Uh, they got out of the cave. You don't know where they ran to specifically. I'm gonna take off my, my, I have like a fur cowl. I'm just gonna take that off and kind of tuck it underneath my arm. I'm gonna command the wolf I'm riding on to run and I'm gonna command the wolf, the purple wolf to stay with uh, this blind gentleman and be a seeing eye dog if he needs it. And I'm gonna uh, command the red wolf to full, full sprint, which for a wolf, I believe is a hundred feet. All right, yeah, it's, it books it books with you out uh, there. Eighty feet. So eighty okay. feet of movement. And I'm gonna try and get as close as I can to the other wolves who are also I want them to basically play keep away with dad. I want them to keep those those pups as far away from dad as possible without leaving like the area. So like run around in circles to prevent dad from catching them while also obviously being safe with the babies. Gotcha. And uh Asmo uh Valiant kind of like puts his hand, one of his hands on you, knowing where you are. Do you have any rope? Would you be able to help me restrain the beast before it wakes up? Hello? Taka? I am there. I, I, I was just, I'm just, I'm, I'm staring at him and I pull out rope slowly. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> All right, it's your turn. Restrain this beast. I restrain the beast, Nick. Meanwhile, we re-enter the fray outside. I have to get rid of Asmo here. Oh boy, uh, oh so boy, oh boy. That one. All right, so Wolfgang, you managed to follow the beast out, if I'm correct, and it's currently chasing the uh, other little biddies out here. So hey. we're back up the top of the list here to Rebecca and Enoch, where each, uh, as the beast ran out, they were ready to fire, and they fired their arrows at them. Rebecca, birthday. Fifteen. That hits. Nice. Whoa! Oh, didn't mean to do that. Wrong click. Three plus Hunter's mark, which she still has. Yes, she does. Five. All right, eight total damage. As this thing now is kind of like hum- like stumbling through this uh, waist-high water. It's now starting to fill with blood as she catches it right above the hip. It's unable to go at its full speed right now. Enoch fires off his shot as well. 16. It's Nice. Two! They're all rolling ones! Oh my right, god. And he's going to burn an action, action surge to reload and fire one last shot. Boom. 14. That'll hit. There you go. Seven. And there he puts Daddy down as it's chasing after the other wolves. It skitters to the ground, and your other wolves run to the side, to the shore, with the little mewling babies in, in their mouth. Okay. I immediately beeline it to them, and I have my cowl out, and I, I, I command the wolves to just put the babies in the cowl, the, the warm fur cowl. All right. You do that. And the wolves deposit the babies in the cowl, and they're just, oh, no. just giving little squeaks. As uh... oh wait, Horace is here too. <laughs> as, and then uh... there's Horace. 
as uh, Blind, Valiant, and Asmo make their way out. Uh, Val- uh, Asmo and Valiant dragging the restrained body of the mother. Valiant, who's regaining his eyesight, makes his way over to the uh, father beast. And as we are out of combat, we no longer necessarily need this map. He uh, goes and does the same to the father beast and uh, Horus and Enoch jump down to help restrain it. And you guys have effectively both saved and both saved the farm and these displacer beasts from uh, execution, I guess. Wolfgang. Yes, t wing I have named them. And that's this... where the credits come in. <laughs> that's, that's like the... I named them. Damn it! <laughs> I told you we're not keeping them, T-Wing. Yeah, but they could use some names. That one is Wolfgang Jr. That oh one is my... Asmo Jr. This one is T-Wing Jr. And that one is Denier Jr. It squeaks. And, uh... Everybody kind of, like, gathers around the little babies. The The mother is, like, still drastically struggling to get at them when she <laughs> regains her consciousness. But, uh... They're she's going to restrained enough to the point that she's not getting loose, and you guys can properly uh, get people to come out and take them somewhere safer, if that's a good option. But hey, more okay. so is the mystery of where these displacer beasts came from. Mm-hmm. Hey, Wolfgang, wouldn't this be a good learning opportunity? You're exactly right. <clears throat> okay. Is anyone hurt? Uh, no. They they are all pretty fresh. Valiant is the only one with any sort of physical injury to them. Uh, he was attacked by the beast when, it le- uh, when the father leapt out at him. Mm. Very good. You all handled yourselves quite well in there. So we'll make fine monster hunters out of you, yeah. It's like you said, sir, not every beast deserves to be killed. Quite right. No, I said before, if anybody knew what these were, I didn't get an answer. Not a satisfying one, anyway. These are displacer beasts. And I'll basically go into detail about them. Where did they come from? You get from uh, Horus. As far as I know, they come from... The, they only, come place from... You, the only place you've seen them was in a magical dimension. I mean, you, they, they... They're they're definitely fey-born creatures. Born of ether. As far as I know, they're from the ethereal realm. They're sort of fae-like creatures. I was going to say, it's got to be fae. Uh, could each of you give me a survival check on these creatures as you're looking them over as they have been now captured? Natural 20. Nice. Natural 20, Wolfgang. Wow. Uh, About fucking time. <laughs> yes. There uh, we go. A interesting note for Wolfgang here as you're like running your hand along the side you feel some scarring on the side of one of them and they are the exact size and shape and location from where you remember some of T-Wig's giant eagles grabbing some of the displacer beasts that you'd seen previously T-Wig yep these are the displacer beasts we fought what? He just looks at the looks at the sky. Remember, you told your eagles to. You told your eagles to drop them off at the side of the. Don't say that in front of the students. But I yeah, I did. I'm gonna look at my bag for my fucking rock. Your blink rock? Yeah. Oh, it would have come back to you regardless. But yeah, you you have the blink rock. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, Wolfgang, when I was talking about education, um, you know, why don't they come and live with the students and stuff? 
Beg pardon? I mean, come on, they're like little and like they could learn from mom and dad and then they can learn from from the babies. You remember that person we like fought in that place where I dropped them with the eagles? They were like commanding them so they could be obviously trained. It might take a little bit of time for us to build proper accommodations for these beasts, but it could be an interesting learning experience. Having a menagerie of sorts. I grab like two leaves and do like eyebrow motions because I don't have eyebrows. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Every part of me is screaming that this is a bad idea. It probably is. <laughs> Looked at the. I turned to the students. Sorry, what device? <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird thing to Nothing. say. Nothing. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry what device? Shut up. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, the uh. <laughs> Looking for Jesus. The students all seem to, uh. Like. The uh, some of them seem to be swooning over like the little babies. Uh, Horus I look is at, looking at the larger ones. I look at the four students and the four babies, and then back up to the four students and back down to the four babies, and then to Wolfgang, and then back down to the four babies and back up to the four students. <sighs> Just sort of wipes his face. Hmm. One of them's kind of do what you like. Back his finger. <laughs> do what you like. But if they get out and I'm not there, you're gonna have to deal with them on your own. Uh, all right, got a long way to go. We should probably get a wagon if we're bringing all these back. Oh, don't worry, I got it. I dropped the wolves. Poof. And I will spend my last level three to do another conjure animals to summon two giant eagles to carry mom and dad. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the eagles hover with mom and dad as you guys make your way back to the Crowley estate. <laughs> they have PTSD. Uh, <laughs> you, you so deliver, uh, Pogan walks up and delivers a brief report to uh, Ichabod, the man you met previously, who seems to be uh, getting towards the end of his day. Walks back over to you, Wolfgang. Uh, Mr. Crowley will be paying us quite finely. Uh, maybe we'll have somebody to help us build this menagerie of sorts. Indeed. And make sure our four students get a modest cut of it as well. Of course. What's a proper guild if nobody's around to take a share? All right, everybody. We're heading home. Back up! And everybody begins marching to Pogan's drum. As you see your students march off with them, you march off with them, just trailing back with everybody else. The sun beginning to set over the, uh, over the mountains. And this is where we will end today's session. <laughs>